Hi, this is Mark with QuicksVenture.com. As you can see, we're using a Raspberry Pi, and today we've configured it to be a NAS device on our Windows network. It takes only a few minutes to set up, and it's not that hard to do, but performance is, is what you'd expect over a 100 meg Ethernet connection and an attached USB hard drive. My Raspberry Pi setup is as ugly as anybody else's, I'm sure. We have a small USB hard drive, a USB hub, and the Raspberry Pi itself but then plugged into just a generic monitor with an HDMI to DVI adapter. To get the Raspberry Pi to see or to be seen on your Windows network, you're going to need to install Samba and use apt-get to do that. sudo apt-get install Samba and sudo apt-get install Samba common bin. There are going to be complete instructions on how to do this in a tutorial on quicksventure.com very soon, but I thought I'd give a quick video to show just what you can do right off the bat. So I've done that, and I also modified my uh, Etsy Samba SMB.conf file, and I'll show you what that looks like over on the Windows side. So maybe a bit hard to see on the Windows computer, but uh, I'll have a complete law or a complete tutorial, like I said, on the uh, QuicksVenture website. Basically, uh, and I totally ripped this off from uh, somebody else on the uh, on the web. I really like the uh, simplicity of his. Uh, comp file. Basically he put together just a set of global settings which are pretty straightforward and then a uh, setup to show you a home directory as well as some public folders. The public folders in the generic uh, uh, file that he created uh, gives the path of root so that when you browse out to your Raspberry Pi on the network uh, you see everything, the, the, whole, uh, the whole drive of the root installation. I modified it on mine so that it only had the slash media folder, and that meant that I would only be sharing on the public section the uh, drives that are attached via USB. So I named mine PyNAS, which looks uh, far dirtier than I had intended when I typed it, so I'm going to change that name. And then uh, when you go out on your network, the first time you, cl uh, the first time you browse out, you're going to be asked for our username and password, and you actually set that up as part of the uh, Samba installation. Uh, in my case, I just left it as Pi and Raspberry, the same as the uh, generic uh, login to the Raspberry Pi itself. You're going to have a Homes section, which is the home folder for Pi. You can see it's got the desktop and Python games. A Pi share, which is actually the same thing. And then the public share that I set up, which in my case only has my Nexstar 80, my uh, 80 gig uh, external hard drive that's plugged into it. Inside that folder, I have some, uh, I've just got a set of TV shows that I'm going to uh, use for uh, setting up a MySQL server momentarily. Uh, but I wanted to give you an idea of what kind of file transfer speeds you'd see. So here we are browsing through, and as you can see, browsing is nice and fast, and it works just like any other Windows machine would on your network. So I'm going to grab the, uh, I'll delete a file off of here. One thing to keep in mind is that the Pi itself natively cannot see uh, NTFS partitions. So you'll have to install uh, NTFS utilities if you want to use them. Let me browse out to my videos folder. So I'm just going to drag another episode over here, and this is a 1.1 gigabyte file, and you can see Windows transferring it now. We're getting about it's anywhere from 2 to 3 megabytes per second, and in my tests it's always leveled off around 2.2, uh, which means you're looking at about 6 to 8 minutes per gigabyte uh, transfer speed. Now that's probably just fine for viewing media uh, anywhere in your house but it's a real pain if that's your only uh, mechanism for transferring files. Moving back over to the Raspberry Pi itself, I wanted to show you in LXDE, you can see down here at the bottom of the screen, this is the CPU usage. And as soon as you start doing any kind of file transfer, it goes to 100% and it stays there throughout the entire transfer. So my feeling is that as a NAS device, the Raspberry Pi is going to have seriously limited potential. 
Now, that being said, I am going to go ahead and uh, install my SQL and connect XBMC to my Raspberry Pi as the uh, library server. And I'm curious to see if it can handle doing library updates and streaming video at the same time. So we'll have that video up shortly. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I will also put together the written tutorial at quicksventure.com. Thanks for watching.